In January of 2018, I made a New Year's resolution that I was going to read 52 books in 52 weeks, a book every week. Almost immediately, I realized what a profound impact this was having on my life. It was not just the exposure to new ideas, but the way that my brain felt like it was rewiring itself. It was a little bit hard to pinpoint exactly what was happening, but I knew that something beneficial was going on. I, I was trying to put my finger on exactly what it was that was changing my brain, and I was really struggling to do this in an effective way. And so I, I started to look into the literature, the psychological and neurological literature surrounding what reading actually does to your brain. And it's actually quite interesting how well studied this is. So I thought I'd share with you some of those findings and, uh, you know, maybe encourage you to pick up a book or two. John Stein at Oxford and Susan Greenfeld have presented a kind of interesting picture, which is that unlike digital worlds where you're constantly attention switching, you have short attention span as a result, you're training your brain in, in that way, reading is a linear process. You're working from start to finish. There's no jumping around, there's no tabbing between things, you're not context switching. And so this, this makes a lot of sense, right? Like in my daily life, as a, as a student uh, working, there's, there's not a whole lot of linear tasks. It's not a whole lot of start to finish. Everything is jumping around, bouncing between things. But then when I get to a linear task, when I want to sit down and work on one project, uh, it, it's difficult. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this feel that way as well, right? When you sit down to write an essay or you sit down to do something, that's hard. And uh, what, what reading has, has done for me, what, what reading has, has changed my brain to be a little bit more able to do, is it's allowed me to, to sit through those tasks which require this linear, long attention span. It's not that that's better than having, you know, a, a highly trained context switching short term, uh, you know, attention span for certain tasks, right? But you need both. You need to train both. And we're constantly training the one uh, through digital technology and very rarely training the other, unless you're consistently reading or engaging in other linear tasks. So the next phenomena come from a study which came out of Emory University, which looked at the lingering effects of reading on the brain. So what they did, the, the way the study was formatted, was it was over a, a few weeks, they took about 21 undergraduate students from the university, and they had them read about a 30-page section of a novel in the evening. And then the next morning, they put them into an fMRI, um, and they compared what was happening in their brain to what was happening in their brain during a resting state, before they had begun reading the novel. Now the first thing that they found, which, which I think is very interesting, is they found heightened activity in the central sulcus of the brain. The way that I understand it is uh, the sensory neurons in your brain, which would be firing uh, if you are, for example, running, uh, also fire when you are thinking about running or reading about running. So you're quite literally uh, kind of putting yourself in someone else's shoes when you're reading about them. It's this very uh, empathetic connection. So what, what I think is interesting about this research, which uh, kind of backs up with anecdotes, right, is that reading a novel is not just like a coldly analytical thing. And this is what I really hate about how reading is sometimes taught in schools, which is this very heavy analysis, you know, what does the author mean by the, the curtains are blue? What emotion is that trying to signify, right? It, it doesn't let you get into the story. It doesn't let you um, empathize with the characters. But when you're reading in this way that, that you're actually getting into the story like this and you're putting yourself in the character's shoes, your brain is, is quite literally imagining you in those shoes. The, those same sensory neurons are, are firing. And I don't know, I just think that's really interesting. Like it's not the analysis of things, it, it's that your brain is actually experiencing it to some extent. Like to me, that's, that's really interesting. I don't know. Now the most compelling thing that this study found, at least in my opinion, was that, mind you, this is the morning after they'd been reading, the researchers found that there was heightened connectivity within a portion of the brain known as the left temporal cortex, which is uh, associated with language and, and facts and memory. So what I think is so interesting about this is that whenever I think about the changes which have occurred in the way that I think uh, after starting to read more, one of the major things that I point to time and time again is how I keep finding connections between 
stories, between facts, between subjects, and, and that has been one of the major things that, that has kept me going with reading and, and made it such an enjoyable experience, is I love finding these random connections and remembering a book that I read a couple of years ago and understanding how it relates to what I'm reading now. What's very interesting is that that is the portion of the brain which is doing those connections. And it's not just when I'm reading that I'm doing these things now, it's when I'm going about in my everyday life, I'm finding these connections, or in classes, or in work that I'm doing, or, or conversations that I'm having with people, maybe most of all. When we're talking about, you know, problems going on, or, or anything like that, I'm able to find connections back to books that I had read. And so this, this makes a lot of sense to me, but it's interesting to see it on paper in a study that there are neurological differences. And mind you, they're, they're lasting neurological differences. We, we don't know how long they last, um, but the, the researchers said at least the next morning, uh, at least five days, I believe they found. And to me, this makes a lot of sense. And it, it's so interesting, right? Because I love finding these connections. It's, it's it's one of the things that, that lights my brain up the most. It, it makes me that the happiest to be using my brain when I'm finding these connections. And and yeah, it's just so cool to see it on paper. So yeah, I wanted to make this video because I, I just I thought it was really interesting. I make a lot of videos talking about reading and the and the anecdotal changes that it's had on my life and I've seen through my comments and through people messaging me who have started reading um, the, the anecdotal changes it's having on their life. And so it's really interesting to see in academic literature the actual physical changes, the neurological changes uh, that it has on people. I just think that's so cool. Like feeling a behavior change and then knowing that there's actually a neurological change going along with it, that your brain is literally becoming more powerful because you're reading. I don't know. It's just cool. I just think it's really neat. I'd now like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Now, I was just looking at my Audible library because I was thinking, I've had Audible for a really long time and I realized I have over 28 titles that I've listened to through Audible and all of them have been incredibly enjoyable experiences. One of the things that I love about audiobooks on Audible is that the quality is consistently excellent. Every time I've listened to an audiobook through Audible, the voice acting has really added another element to the story, and for that reason, I prefer personally to listen to fiction audiobooks. It's where I do a lot of my, my fictional listening, is where I get involved in these stories. And so with that, I'd like to recommend to you the fictional audiobook which I listened to this month, Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Foundation is known as one of the foundational series in science fiction, and as a sci-fi nerd, I, I knew that I had to get into it eventually. The audio rendition of it on Audible is amazing. It was just a pleasure to listen to, and uh, I got through it pretty quickly, and now I'm working my way through the rest of the series. So if you want to listen to Foundation, or you want to listen to any other audiobook in Audible's massive collection, then what I'll recommend you do is go to audible.com slash johnfish, or text code johnfish to 500-500. So this is going to get you a 30-day free trial, which includes one credit for any audiobook in their massive collection, as well as unlimited Audible original downloads. It's a fantastic deal if you go to audible.com slash johnfish, or you text code johnfish to 500-500. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it has uh, convinced you to, to get into a story, to pick up a book, an audiobook, to to get into one of these linear activities and, and start, you know, getting these connections in your brain firing. Because it's just a cool thing. It's just really neat. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to subscribe if you did. Feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you read, if you don't read. Um, I just, I love hearing from you. So hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're staying safe. And I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.